Okay, so today uh, we'll talk about Alive 2, but before we move on, I just want to spend a couple of minutes on Alive for those who don't know. So Alive has found already like dozens of bugs in LLVM, so it's probably more well known these days by this, you know, this, uh, this small website, this uh, Rise for Fun. So you go there, you write your optimization, you click on the play button, and it'll tell you, oh, you have a bug, or you know, it's correct and you are good to go. Um, and so, how does it work? So, essentially, you write this, um, your optimization in this kind of DSL. So, in green, you have the original program that you want to optimize. In purple, you have uh, the optimized program. And then in that blue, you have the precondition. So, essentially, we want to introduce NSW in this operation if the valid tracking analysis says that you can, essentially. So that's what this transformation is doing. And of course, it's correct. Um, you can also leave the types. Uh, it, you don't need to specify the types, right? So if you don't specify the types, Alive will just try all possible combinations and, um, and it'll tell you if that's correct or not. Um, of course, you know, to finish in our lifetime, it, you know, it bounds how many uh, bits it it tries and how many elements and, and so on. <clears throat> and also a word of caution here. So, you know, since Alive was a bit slow, the original version, people get used to fix the bit width and, uh, you know, it's not always correct because we can have additions with I1 and, you know, that's always, you know, kind of edge case. Um, so just because it's correct for eight bits doesn't necessarily mean, you know, it's correct for one bit. Um, so I would encourage to, you know, try to leave the uh, types um, out of there. Okay, so Alive 2. So the new thing that we have in this year. So it's essentially, it's a whole, it's re-implementation from scratch of Alive. Uh, now in C++, so it's uh, way faster than the old, old Alive. It's, you know, production quality. Um, we aim at, you know, zero false positive, so it will never tell you, oh, this optimization is buggy if it's not, okay? Um, and then the goal is basically to support all of LLVM, uh, at least, you know, all the core LLVM, and then, you know, the top most used intrinsics and so on. I mean, we don't have bandwidth to support all, all the intrinsics, but, you know, the mostly used. And now we have these new tools that we'll present next uh, on the next few slides. Okay, so translation validation, which is the kind of, the new trick of LLVM, oh, uh, sorry, of Alive 2. What is it? So, translation validation asks the question of was the optimization correct as opposed to like, is it correct? So, the idea is if you run an optimization, so you take an IR, you optimize it, you get the, you know, uh, optimized IR, you can feed these two into Alive and then it, it will tell you if this specific optimization with this specific program was correct, okay? This is translation validation. So what is, uh, okay, and then Alive will tell you, okay, it's correct, it's not correct, and give you some example. And of course, sometimes it cannot tell you if it's correct or not, and we'll just, you know, time out and give up. But, um, and it usually, when it time out, is basically it's because it's okay, but anyway. Um, why is it, so how is this useful? So we implemented this OPT plugin, which is basically it's Alive within LLVM. So now, you can run OPT and it will tell you whether that optimization was correct. So essentially, you know, you, you give some bit code to OPT, it runs optimization, and then it will feed the original and optimize to Alive. So for example, you can, um, you can say OPT-TV, which is our, um, our model, dash is combined, dash TV, and then the file, and then it will run Alive for you on this um, program. So, we specified twice because you know the first dash TV will just capture the original IR, and then the second that dash TV will capture you know the optimized IR. And if you want to verify multiple optimizations, for example, you can just um, do that dash TV multiple times, or you know you just do in the beginning and the end to prove you know that the chain was fine. So you can do both ways. Um, we haven't done yet, but you know the, the goal is to have you know the dash verify each and intercept that, and you know, we'll automatically verify you know 
all the optimizations that you run. Um, but anyway, we haven't implemented that bit yet, but uh, so you need to put the dash TV yourself. <clears throat> okay, so now that you have this OPT plugin, what's the first ingenious idea? Or not so much, is to run it over the LVM test suite. Right? And um, this was the experiment, you know, the first experiment that you run. And luckily, lit allows you to intercept the OPT call. So we just, you know, write a script. It essentially just adds the dash TV around the, the OPT the call and skips some un unsupported passes like all the IPO stuff that we don't support and, um, and runs uh, a live over the, the test suite. And right now it takes about 40 minutes with eight cores uh, to run on the, uh, on the test suite. And the results were, actually we found bugs. So what we thought it was just a smoke test, you know, for a live, you know, just running a live on the LVM test suite, we found already 13 bugs. Um, six of them were fixed already. Thanks everybody that has uh, helped us with that. And, and you can see it's not just in combine anymore, so it can also, it's starting to find bugs in other passes in LVM. Um, and the interesting thing, you know, the, this bug, like these bugs were found in unit test cases where people actually, you know, were checking that the output of the optimizer was wrong, okay? So this is not just random code or something, these were unit tests. And there are many more that Alive is complaining about, but they are kind of related with undev, and since we, and they would become correct if undev would die, and so since undev is dying uh, soon, then we, we are not reporting those uh, right now. But um, yeah, yeah. So this is just a live two like recent ones, not counting with it, uh, the previous bugs. Many of these are related with vectors because the original alive didn't support vectors, and now since we are unleashing you know uh, verification of vector optimizations, uh, we are finding these bugs. Let me just give you a quick example of a bug that we found recently. So I've simplified a bit, so to have an, uh, a vector of two elements. And what is optimization, so this is a unit test uh, that is incorrect. I mean, the optimization is incorrect, but the, we are checking for the wrong result as well. Um, so it's trying to transform this uh, arithmetic shift right plus an XOR with a, with a logical whole shift. And if we give this to yeah, I know, if you spot the bug, uh, I don't, but uh, the, the good thing is that Alive can do this work for us. So you can just call opt dash, uh, no, uh, dash tv dash ins combine, and then it will tell you, oh, this is wrong, because the function now returns a different value, okay? It's called value mismatch. Uh, and it will give us an example. And it'll tell you, oh, if I pass this vector as input, you know, zero, four, then, you know, on the source, I'll compute these, these vectors, and on the target, I'll compute something else. And then the function, uh, the original function will return four minus one, and now after optimization, it returns four, eight, okay? So the first element is correct, it's just the second element is not. And, um, and you can guess that it's because of that and the, there. Um, and just, you know, just quickly, if we have this, um, this number, right, so if I do arithmetic shift right, the first five bits will be equal, but on the logical shift, only the four first bits will be equal. Um, and so, uh, even with the XOR, there's no way that we can uh, make the logical shift, you know, uh, sorry, you have the arithmetic, arithmetic shift F, you know, uh, the fifth bit to be different from the first four. So um, the XOR doesn't help us there. So, you know, that's why this optimization, you know, um, the, we cannot put the undef in the output. Okay, so that undef needs to become something else. Um, say zero. So anyway, just a quick um, example of, you know, what the live can find automatically for you. So it's not obvious that its optimization was wrong, but you know, a live just finds the bug for you. Okay, so we have other tools. So the other tool that I like a lot uh, is called Alive TV. 
Um, so, I mean, it's similar in spirit to, oh, to the OPT plugin, uh, is that, that it doesn't perform the optimization. So the idea is you give two IR files, so you know, you have the source file, you have some target file, and you know, I find, and then you just you know, call a live and say, look, is the transformation between the source and target correct? And in this case, you'll sell. It will tell you yes. And I find this very useful because you can kind of try the optimization before implementing it. So you can just take the original IR file, you you modifying the way that the op op optimizer would, and you test it just to, to see if there's some corner case that you forgot or something. Uh, so I found this tool super useful. And you need to be careful because the order of arguments actually matters, right? So because this is proving a refinement, so it's only from source to, to target, not the other way around. So, you know, watch out the argument order. Okay, so when we say, when a live says it's correct, or, I mean, it, it actually doesn't say it's correct, it says it looks correct, just to be safe. Uh, <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah. It, it is not the lawyers that ask, but, uh, but could be, uh, could have been. Uh, yeah, so what does it mean when it says it's correct, right? So what's actually verified by a live? So the first thing is checks whether the, the, the function, like before and after optimization, is exactly the same, right? I mean, not exactly the same, but it's a refinement. So for example, we can go from def to zero, but not, this, but not you know, from zero to def. So it checks, so this function with, is correct. And the second thing it needs to check is whether the memory is, is also refined. So right now this is not being done. So if you give this example where we have you know, store three to store 42, it will tell you, oh yeah, it's correct, of course. But uh, this is coming you know, real soon, I hope. Um, and these two things are, the, you know, these are the two things that are checked when a life says it's correct. And this, these two things are sufficient. The other thing, so you can influence a bit what's verified, and there's this switch, which, which kind of means what would the world look like if NDEF died? Uh, and so you can just pretend that NDEF doesn't exist and, and, uh, and try the verification like that. I mean, don't abuse this, because right now NDEF exists, and you cannot insert an optimization in LLVM that is wrong if NDEF doesn't exist, but you know, I think it's useful just to to reason, you know, what would the world look like if NF didn't exist? Um, and we run ex experiments like this just to see, you know, how many bugs go away if we re remove NF. Okay, so the features that the live has, so as pr pretty much all integer instructions, vectors are almost all of it, I think. Floats, we support floats, but no fast math at the moment has some intrinsics. Uh, the memory is on, per, you know, it's, it's being done right, right now. And loops uh, are coming as well. So the limitation, just to be clear, what a life supports, what it doesn't. So, you know, for the time being, and I guess for the next year, it will be inter-procedural only. So no inlining, no IPO, no IPA, whatever. Into PTR doesn't work at the moment and it's unlikely to work you know, um, anytime soon. And, and as I said, the memory is not being checked right now, but, but it is coming soon. Also, we trust the TLI data from LVM. I hope this is okay, but things like, you know, what are the known functions? Like, is this a mem copy? Uh, what's the preferred ABI alignment? And this kind of thing. We trust this information from LVM. Okay? We don't have any other source for this data. Okay, so now over to John. Okay, well, so, so Nuno is the, uh, the primary Alive 2 architect and he's done a good job with it. And my students and I have been helping out with, with adding some features and writing some code for it. And it's not only us who've been, uh, who've been helping out with Alive 2, there have also, also been several other contributors. And the, the kind of cool thing about this is there are some pretty hard parts about this code base where, where we have some tricky interfacing with Z3, and Nuno is sort of the, the, Z3, the, the Z3 god. But 
adding features doesn't necessarily need to be that hard. So if you see stuff that's missing here, um, you know, maybe ask us whether, whether it's going to be that hard to add. And we can po if, you, if you're interested in contributing, we can possibly direct you to, um, to, to, to possibly help out here. So adding, for example, adding new instructions that are missing, this isn't necessarily that hard. Okay, so let's talk about some other stuff we can do with Alive. So um, Alive, as it exists, is an IR to IR um, refinement checker. It, it doesn't have any notion of a semantics of machine code. And yet, we have these LLVM backends that have substantial complexity embedded in them. We've heard about, we heard about uh, Global ISIL yesterday, for example. And it's not inconceivable that some of these backends would contain bugs. And so how could we possibly um, use Alive to, 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 to look for maybe some, some bugs in backends? So what we can do is um, take LLVM IR and um, use an LLVM backend to make it into machine code, and then use one of a number of binary to IR decompilers that are available to lift the binary back to LLVM IR, and now we can do a refinement check just as we did before. And so we've been doing this, and this, you know, this, 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 so I'll talk about it a little bit more. It's, it's, it somewhat works. So one thing we might ask is where do we get the IR to do this kind of testing? And so Nuno referred to using the LLVM test suite as um, a corpus of code to look for refinement failures. And the bugs that, that, that Nuno's been finding and using that method are sort of at some level, as he said, kind of very funny because um, not only was something wrong in LLVM, but somebody wrote a test making sure that it did the wrong thing. So when I do this, this backend checking, I didn't wanna, I didn't wanna, um, I didn't want to just work with that kind of code. I've been using a small, um, exhaustive LLVM function generator that I wrote. And what it does is basically sort of within some, 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 some limitations, it generates um, kind of all LLVM functions up to a size limit. And there's a bunch of caveats when I say all, but you know, it, it generates a lot of functions. So if I tell this, 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 this generator to generate all functions with one instruction, there's something like 5,000 of them. All functions with two instructions, there's two and a half million, and this takes, you know, it takes a few minutes, and three instructions currently fills up a two terabyte disk. So, you know, of course, it's an exponential source of space that blows up really quickly. So as we go to two, three, four, five, six instructions, we're gonna have to sample the space. We can't just, um, we can't generate them all. But in any case, once you've generated all these functions, even if you have a couple of million of them, you can fan this out to a cluster and compile them to machine code, decompile them, um, and run alive on them, and, and really conduct a pretty thorough, systematic search for bugs in LLVM backends. And of course, you can also use these same functions to look for middle-end optimization bugs, and we, you know, of course, we find those too. So, why would we want to do this as opposed to using some sort of, you know, using IR that we find in the wild? Um, it's, nice to, it's, it's, it's nice to test IR that's not generated by Clang. There's a lot of parts of LLVM that have a little bit of um, implicit bias towards the IR that they've seen already, but, you know, these passes the, and backends are supposed to be correct in general. We might as well we, we might as well check the general case to whatever extent that we can. And so, just to just to emphasize, you know, reasoning about the C++ and LLVM is nearly impossible, right? The semantics for C++, you know, reasoning about optimizations implemented in C++ nearly impossible. But once the C++ executes, a formal methods tool like Alive 2 can reason about a particular execution of it in a pretty thorough fashion, and that's what we're doing here. So. Um, what are we doing here, or sort of what happens when we do this? Well, I've only been working on this for a little while, but mostly it finds uh, decompiler bugs. So there's a number of LLVM, or sorry, of, of machine code to LLVM decompilers. Um, mostly I've been finding bugs in those, and I haven't found any backend bugs yet, but you know, I've only been working on this for a little bit, and I'm, um, you know, eventually I would, I would expect to start finding, um, finding LLVM bugs as well. And there's some pretty interesting stuff going on where when you compile LLVM, which has undefined behavior, sort of copious undefined behaviors in some case, to, to machine code, that's a meaningful refinement where you take sort of an, a, a partially defined function and, and, and you, know, you create a total function out of it at the machine code level. So when you lift that back, you're not allowed to lift, for example, a machine code shift to an LLVM shift because you're taking something that's more tightly defined and lifting it into something that's more loosely defined, so you have to add masking. And it turns out that you know, it's not always the case that these machine code to LLVM de decompilers are sufficiently careful about this. And these are the kind of things that are sort of getting in our way as we, as we start to look for um, what we hope to do is find LLVM bugs, but there's a lot of, place, there's a lot of ways for these, uh, these, these decompilers to, to, to go wrong as well. So beyond that, we should be able to run sort of a, so, so in, in general, 
anytime there's sort of a parse print loop, anytime there's kind of a loop uh, where, you can, where you can run some sort of a tool and go between formats and come back, you have an opportunity to do good testing. And we should be able to apply Alive to some of these other examples as well. So for example, we can convert LLVM to the MLIR LLVM dialect, convert back to LLVM, and, ch and check refinement of this. So we haven't done this yet, but there's a lot of other um, conversion loops involving LLVMR that we should be able to test using this formal methods tool. Like I say, we haven't done it yet, but this would be a perfectly reasonable thing for some student to pick up, for example, or maybe we'll get, a, get around to it sooner or later. So, in conclusion, we have this tool which is fully automatic formal verification of LLVM optimizations, and the caveat is it requires specific code to be optimized, and then we can prove that that optimization worked for all inputs, for all, for all, of, the, all of the input values, or else give a counterexample that, that, it, that it didn't work. And um, you, as um, an optimization writer, should, if you can, use this tool because it has a very sophisticated understanding of the undefined behavior issues that are quite tough for humans to reason about. So we'd encourage you to run this tool. It's just, you know, it's just some C++, you can download it and compile it. Um, it's, it's, it's pretty easy to run. And we would appreciate getting feedback on it. If you find any bugs in Alive, let us know if it works. If you report an LLVM bug that you discovered with Alive, we'd, we'd be super happy to um, have you cite Alive in the, in the bug report. And anyway, just overall, we want this tool to be a part of the LLVM ecosystem. It's sort of a, it, you know, this is the kind of thing that makes writing reliable compilers a lot easier. And we hope, we hope that this um, can help make a difference in practice. Thanks. It's not just me taking questions. You can ask Nuno too. All right, there's a microphone in the center of the room. So if anybody has questions. I'll, I'll repeat the question while, while, we're, while we're switching over. It's, the question is how easy it would be to port this tool over to something like SIL, the, the Swift Intermediate Language. That goes from LLVM IR to Alive IR. So you kind of need to build that front end from, say, SIL to uh, Alive IR. I know it's. Um, I think you know any of these compiler IRs shouldn't be very difficult to convert to Alive IR because you know they, in the end, you know most IRs are very similar, right? So the thing to get right is you know all the undefined behavior. You know that's that part that you need to be careful, right? Uh, but otherwise, I think you know IRs have addition, multiplication, and so on, and it's all the same. And there's some work we haven't done yet that we want to do where we want to make the undefined behavior model kind of pluggable so you can swap it out, out different ones. So you can play with different alternatives, but this would also make it easy to, to swap out, you know, for example, SIL's undefined behavior, to swap in SIL's undefined behavior model once this works. Right, thank you. Um, how good is Alive 2 at dealing and understanding with control flow? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, you know, if there are no loops, there's no problem right now. Uh, it will You'll just, just, just fine. If there are loops, of course, you know, verification with loops, it's kind of uh, impossible in inter-general case. So the idea for now is to do kind of bounded model checking style. And, uh, you know, in the long term, we need a better solution. But, but yeah, it will try to do something. Um, but yeah, it cannot guarantee that the optimization manipulating loops is correct at the moment. Uh, have you tried applying this to basic stuff like serialization, deserialization of IR, and for example, conversion to SPIRV and back from SPIRV? No, serialization and deserialization, you should get, you're supposed to get back what you started with, right? So, so there we would just be doing sort of more simple differential testing. We wouldn't require a refinement checker, does it, right? Okay, then what about SPIRV? Uh, if you convert it to SPIRV and back, it's not exactly the same IR, but supposed to be the same semantics? That should work. We haven't done anything like that, but it should, it should work. Okay. That'd be a great 
project for an intern or something if we want to look for bugs. Um, so you mentioned that you don't handle like inter inter procedural uh, analysis. Does that also include self recursive functions? This is kind of like a loop question. Yeah, I mean, yeah. So we will. Um, so self recursive functions. I mean, the the question is whether the optimization uh, handles, you know, touches different functions. If it only touches one function, and, and it it's fine. Um, yeah. Hi, thanks for the talk. Uh, I have one comment about Spurvy. I recently found out that Spurvy has LVM style undef. So once we kill undef in LVM, we'll have to figure out a story for Spurvy as well. <laughs> uh, so my question was, uh, do you have a story for side effects other than memory stores? Like if you do five volatile loads at some addresses, like that needs to stay the same after optimization? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Right now, I think our reasoning is that you know all side effects kind of affect the memory somehow, and so uh, I mean, or does the memory state? Right? So these would be re represented like that. So when I refer to the refinement of memory, it includes all these side effects. I think. I see. So yeah. it's not just that the bytes are the same. No, it's no, everything it's... that has happened to the memory is the right. Same. Exactly. All right, are there any more questions? All right, well, let's thank the speakers.